Well, good morning, everybody, and good morning. This is a, a real treat uh, for, for me. Uh, Susan and I are, are longtime friends and, and colleagues, and certainly Susan Line is the definition of transformation. Uh, <laughs> Susan spent 10 years as a magazine journalist, uh, very well known for bringing uh, Premier Magazine into our lives, and then uh, 10 years in the television business as president of ABC, Entertainment, uh, and then four years at an Omnimedia <laughs> company, um, and that was a good thing. Uh, and then uh, we were there together. And we were there together. We were, and then left us for the e-commerce world. Four years uh, at Gilt, and now in the last uh, ten days or so, uh, the newly appointed CEO of the AOL Brand Group. So, uh, if anyone is the definition of transformation. Uh, it is, in fact, Susan Lyons. So uh, congratulations on, on this latest. It's very, very exciting. So on to our conversation. Now, I've, I've often felt that in the last 18 years or so since the beginning of, of the digital revolution that I've been sitting in a math, science, and technology class. Mm -hmm. And those of us who love uh, brands and storytelling and content uh, had a little bit difficult time getting our, our voices heard. Uh, but now it seems all of a sudden Everything, every conversation mm -hmm. uh, is about content uh, and about storytelling. We're seeing significant investment yep. uh, in content uh, and wonderful growth in it. So you left the content world in 2008 mm -hmm. uh, for e-commerce. What's changed to bring you back into the content world? Yeah, um, you know, when, when I left and I had been at large media companies for the most part um, and media companies that didn't quite know where the world was going or what the impact was going to be on them and, and in many cases were either putting blinders on or just not really investing very much. Um, and on the technology side, it just felt like content was devalued. It was either something to be aggregated or something that users generated. Um, and I honestly didn't know what the path was going to be. Uh, but I did feel like e-commerce was going into kind of an, an interesting phase. And guilt was kind of the, the beginning of that. Um, if you think about the first generation of e-commerce, uh, it was really about convenience and, um, and reliability. But it had very little to do with what I think most women think of when they talk about shopping. Right? And it was not. If, if you knew what you wanted, it was great. But, uh, but shopping was about discovery. It was about browsing. It was about being able to see someone's eye in the collection of stuff they brought together and get excited by it and fall in love with something. And that was not the e-commerce world. But Gilt, I think, was one of the first, um, one of the first companies that really understood that, that it was possible to bring that online. So, there was an exciting moment there. I think what's, um, what's changed, and you really alluded to this, over the last year I've been sensing a real shift in the kind of marketplace perception about, com uh, about content. <clears throat> um, you know, you see it in Netflix making House of Cards. You see it in Google investing in um, in all these channel uh, verticals, investing in either either talent or brands to bring uh, bring their eye to YouTube's content. That's really something. I promise you. Five years ago, I had a conversation there about you know why don't you bring curators in and really help us discover what's there. And if you couldn't do it algorithmically, they weren't interested. They and so there, there's a big shift taking place, and I think that's exciting. On your uh, comments about e-commerce, <clears throat> that's another hot topic, it's sort mm -hmm. of the, the marriage of e-commerce and content. Do you see that as inevitable? Is that a very difficult proposition from a, from a creation standpoint? Yeah, I think that, um, I do think that, that we're going to get there. Um, but it's harder than you think because uh, I think all of you probably know um, that when someone goes to a content site, they go with a certain, um, I don't know, mindset, I guess is the word. 
where they're there to be entertained or to be informed and to get them to move into I'm going to buy something mode, mm -hmm. it's very difficult. Uh, and when you're, you're thinking about buying something, it's very hard to get someone to switch off that I have a purpose here and to really consume content. But we're getting a little better at it, and I think over time we're going to get it right. I think that, that when you're bringing content into the commerce flow, it's got to be something that actually, actually helps you make a decision at that moment. It can't take you away from, from what you're there to do. Um, and likewise, I think in the, in the content stream, um, it's got to be something where if you fall in love with something you see, and we've all had that happen where someone's wearing a dress and you think, oh my God, I love that. Where did it come from? <laughs> uh, that it becomes easy to make that transition so it has to work into buying it. Both ways. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. and organically. It can't be something where you're trying to, to get people to shift modes when they're not going to be ready to do it. So not so easy. Not so easy. But you see it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think it yeah. will. So you've talked a lot about uh, thinking like an entertainment mm -hmm. uh, programmer using tent poles and big mm -hmm. ideas, yeah. big events, uh, but also uh, sort of sprinkled throughout the, um, the year or the schedule, uh, a steady flow of provocative and mm -hmm. uh, must share content. Can you talk a little bit more about that? What does it really mean to think and act as an entertainment yeah. programmer? So first of all, I have been here a week. So <laughs> it would be so in New Orleans unbelievably or no? <laughs> arrogant of me to say that I had a plan. Um, but, but you but, ran ABC Entertainment, so you. And, and I, I think what, um, what you're talking about is a, is a memo I sent to the brand group when I first took the job. And it was really saying that I think there's a different way for us to, to think about this. I, if you, if you look at digital content size, particularly portals, I think there's a, um, uh, there's a sameness on some level uh, tonally to the offerings for the most part, um, where there can be great content, but there isn't that sense of, okay, this is gonna be a big day or a big moment that, that I think old media does extremely well. I mean, you know, there's, there's no question that, um, that uh, networks uh, have got something going. When they think about programming and they think about sweeps weeks and event television, uh, we, can, we can afford to bring a little of that to the internet. And I think the showmanship piece could serve us very well. Um, and, and also just a sense of what the, the consumer's calendar is. What are you thinking about what are many, many of us thinking about at, at any given moment, right? Uh, back to school or, mm -hmm. or tax time or, um, or right after the holiday when you're thinking about, ugh, I have, to, I have to lose weight, I've got to clean out my system, I've got to clean my house, I've got to get organized, I've got to start fresh. You know, there are those moments that are driven by our sort of biological calendars and our psychic calendars that I think create opportunities for for different kind of programming. Do you see anything out there that you think is a good model or uh, glimpses of a, of a good model that exemplifies what you're talking about? Um, yeah, I, I, I can even point to some things in, in our own portfolio. You know, when I look at TechCrunch, I think they've done mm -hmm. a great job of not just covering the tech world, but also um, also creating events that bring together the tribe and that become um, rallying points for what's going to be important for the coming year. You know, disrupt is a big deal now. Um, and certainly the Huffington Post, I was, the, uh, the day that I was writing that memo, um, the Huffington Post had, had a headline that said, it came from space. And it was that, uh, that meteor that came oh, very that, close yeah. to <laughs> Earth. Um, but it was very much a newspaper uh, point of view where you know, something big happens. You, it's, a, it's a banner headline. It's not just the DL. It's a, you know, this is, this is big. We need to, 
we need to really talk about it. Um, so I, I think there, there are things, but, uh, but I think it's, it's early days for, for digital platforms to think more like programmers um, and less like content aggregators. So you're in charge, you mentioned uh, TechCrunch, but you're also mm -hmm. in charge of uh, all of the fabulous programming that AOL has in the women's lifestyle yeah. Yeah. Uh, arena. Yeah. And uh, you've got Engadget. Yes. Um, you've got Patch. Yes. Um, yep. you've, got, you've got a lot there. We have some good brands. Um, and, <laughs> what are you going to some... focus on first? Um, <laughs> Uh, again, five days I have been working, six days. <laughs> um, but I think there are, there are certain uh, areas where we have real strength and where we can build on that strength to, to be the definitive number one player, whether it's technology, and I would add finance in there, although we're gonna have to build that piece out. Um, the whole women's arena, uh, I think Maureen has done a fantastic job I'm starting to build out that portfolio, Stylist and Kitchen Daily, um, but also Makers, which, uh, which in many ways is the, is the biggest piece of event programming. Susan, um, can you talk about that a little? Sure. It's, it's, it's gotten yeah. some, some terrific press in the last couple of weeks, but I'm not sure everyone uh, is familiar yeah. with all the pieces of it and the genesis of it as yeah. well. And, and really, if there's one thing you're going to look at, I would, I would urge you to look at Makers. This is a, a project that AOL got behind. It was a young documentary filmmaker whose idea was, I am going to, to interview um, all the women who were part of the early women's movement and then what followed from that. And it's not just the women's movement, but it's women who were change agents, whether it was Billie Jean King or um, or it was Gloria Sinem. Mm -hmm. you, you know, they were they were people who really had an impact on the way women were perceived, and uh, they have done hundreds of these interviews. It's an incredibly rich oral history at this point. Um, all of them in short bites available on on AOL.com, uh, and last week, I believe, or the week before, PBS did a three-hour documentary um, that really used all of these great interviews. It's a phenomenal three hours of television um, and became a hugely viral moment. Uh, I mean, it was a, a trending topic on on Twitter for hours that night, uh, and it has become uh, a, a great source of traffic to AOL since. So that's something where, um, uh, where I think AOL stuck their neck out. We got a wonderful advertising sponsor. Well, Unilever, and I simple. think, actually exactly. brought their, their simple yep. product to this country with that. Yep. Um, and, and that will be an ongoing series on AOL? That will be an AOL, ongoing so. series, yeah. We will continue to build on this, and I think there are lots of spin-offs we can do from it that it, it sort of points the way to a very rich and, um, and conceptual way of doing premium video uh, that, that involves great storytelling and, and something important. So uh, it's a... It, it was really one of the things that, that I thought about when I was taking this job, is that, that if AOL can do that um, mm -hmm. and actually turn it into a success online and a success offline uh, and, and draw you know, great marketers to the party, then that's a terrific model. Well, you know, CEO, your CEO now, uh, Tim Armstrong, talks about creating the media company of the future. And a friend of yours says that you have a built-in GPS uh -huh. uh, for shifting winds. Uh -huh. um, so what exactly was it, besides Makers, that's a great yeah, example, yeah. but yeah. what else really excited you about AOL? And what, what winds yeah. do you see shifting yeah, there yeah, yeah. Yeah. that caused you to leave what's arguably uh, every woman in this room's uh, favorite site. I, and guilt. I'm still on, on Gilt's board. I will never <laughs> leave Gilt. I'm, I'm passionate about what we've built. Um, but I did, uh, you know, I think 
a few of the speakers this morning have alluded to the fact that this past five years has been incredibly rich for platforms, for devices, and when a period like that happens, um, for a while it's all about the toy, it's all about the device. Um, and after a while, it becomes about something different. It, it becomes about what I can do with this, what I can consume on it. And so content becomes a much more important factor. Um, I, I've been on AOL's board since the spin out, and so I have watched Tim build this new company. I'm nuts about him. I think he's a brilliant CEO. But I think he saw before a lot of other people what was happening and understood that what he needed to build was not just a premium content company mm -hmm. um, and a great technology company, but also a company that combined um, technology and creativity on the marketing side. So great programmatic sales and great premium sales. And so I think the company is just incredibly well positioned for where the world is going. Um, and that, uh, that my skills will be valuable. So that's all you ask for in a job, <laughs> right? It, it's, it's the right strategy, the right moment, the right team, and the sense that you can bring something to the party. So one of the uh, controversial uh, pieces of Tim's strategy mm -hmm. uh, has been patch. I think that was much, yep. uh, um, much maligned during the uh, proxy fight. Um, I don't think that it would be fair to say that uh, everyone is on board with that, but patch <laughs> is now under your uh, your yep. wings. So how, how do you think about that? I think that it is, um, it, uh, it was an ambitious play, and if we can pull this off, and I think we can, it's going to be an unbelievably valuable play. Um, so we're in uh, over 900 towns now, um, and really the idea here was to be able to, to inform and, and connect people in towns yeah, so to make their lives easier, simpler, better. Um, and I think you know, part of the reasoning behind this was that 90% of all retail sales happen within a couple of miles of somebody's house. So, so hyper-local is incredibly important if you are a marketer. Um, and it's incredibly important if you live in a town. And, uh, increasingly, even local newspapers are are disappearing. So, um, so that that sort of glue that allowed people to find out um, uh, what was important in their little nook of the world um, is is much tougher. And uh, I think that that again here, bringing together great technology and creativity and. Uh, and we're getting closer, um, is going to be ultimately a hugely successful play. So when you think about the, uh, you know, Tim's talking about this is the, the media company of the future, and I, I know that, you know, one of the things that you said was attractive was that, you know, Tim positions this as a media and technology yeah. company. There's not that sort of old argument about, oh, yeah. you know, what Which are we? Yeah. Um, you know, you're, you're a content company that seems to be fueled by technology, and, yep. um, and that, that seems to be, be yeah. a great place. Um, what haven't we touched on? When you think about the media company of the future, um, you know, we've talked a little bit about mm -hmm. the kind of content um, that will engage the, the consumer. What, what else about the media company of, of the future is, is attractive to you? What do you see? Um. You know, I think that uh, that we've been through uh, a decade. You would say 18 years, but you were way <laughs> ahead of me. So, um, but certainly a decade of uh, of huge innovation. Um, and when you when you think about uh, the the old portals were really aggregated content that. You know, you were supposed to come there and start your day there. But I think if we can bring together <coughs> uh, 
uh, content technology, great platforms, great content, and community. And maybe commerce? And maybe over time, <laughs> commerce, we'll see. That's not where we're starting. Um, uh, that we have a very, very big opportunity going forward, not just for AOL, but I, I think this is gonna be a really rich time um, for, for content period. Uh, and I think that there are enough people now who have been schooled in, in the digital world who may not be digital natives, but who have embraced the opportunity, embraced the possibilities, and who also bring um, a, a real understanding of brands, a real understanding of storytelling, uh, uh, and, and showmanship, which, which is ultimately gonna be important in this play. So, um, so I think it's gonna be uh, a, a great time to connect with consumers because I think the content's gonna be that much better. Well, Tim Armstrong has said that you are one of the uh, most important brand people um, in our world. And you know, I, having worked with you uh, for all of those years, um, they're very, very fortunate to have you, and it's great to have you back uh, in the content business. Thank you. So, food and wine. <laughs>